Good afternoon, folks. Uh, let's see how this works, because I'm new to all this video and carry on, but um, I, I want to talk to uh, you this afternoon about rates of reaction. I, I already stuck a jam board up, um, and you gave me some excellent contributions based on N5 um, knowledge. Uh, of course, a rate is simply a speed um, of a reaction. And if we steal uh, a little equation from our brothers and sisters in the physics department, then they've got speed equals the change in distance. I'm too lazy to write change in, by the way, so I'm just going to use the Greek word delta for a change in, because that's what it means. So it's a change in distance over a change in time. Um, so we are going to use pretty much the same thing. In fact, we did use that last year. Only we didn't use distance, of course, because in chemistry we don't really care about distances. Um, what we tended to have was a change in volume, or a change in mass. Uh, this is for gases given off, of course, when gas is produced. A uh, change in mass is also when gas is produced, only we're not catching the gas this time, we're letting the gas escape, and we're measuring how much lighter the beaker becomes as the gas escapes from the beaker. Um, so this was all National 5 stuff, and you all were great at it. You also um, gave me the three things uh, that affected, the four things actually, sorry, four things that, that changed the speed of reaction. Um, they were, number one, temperature. Number two, concentration. That applies to solutions, of course. Um, number three, surface area. And that, interestingly, also tends to apply to solids, usually by itself. So surface area. Uh, in case you're fuzzy on that one, quick reminder on that one, if you've got a single big chunk of chemical, then the other chemical that's reacting with it can only touch it on the surface, it can't touch the inside. Whereas if you spread out into lots of little bits, if you turn it into powder effectively, then the reaction becomes way faster. Um, that used to cause explosions in sawmills a long time ago. Um, and that we're not at school, but if we were at school, we could point out that, that if you're passing the back of the school and you see all the fancy extraction equipment that Technical have got downstairs, you will notice that that's outside the building. And you'll also perhaps notice there's an X on the big flat panels. Uh, the big flat panels are like the walls of the air ducting. Uh, and inside that, uh, if there is an explosion, that panel is designed to blow out intentionally. The Xs are weak areas in the steel. But that's just a little side note. Uh, there is a fourth one, of course. I'll do the fourth one oops, in a different colour because it's witchcraft and it's catalysts. If you're a biochemist, then you'll be really keen, we should all be keen on them because they keep us all alive, on the biological version of catalysts, which are called enzymes. Uh, and I say witchcraft here, I'm joking, but of course they speed up a chemical reaction without actually getting involved in it, or it seems that way, superficially. We'll take a closer look at these guys this year. We'll see how this witchcraft actually works. Well, one type of it anyway. Um, so, I wanted to start with this, uh, which you all gave me excellently. Um, I was... Um, it's at this point that I will possibly cut the video and then put a link to a chemical reaction um, that doesn't involve producing gas or getting lighter or heavier because then you've got a fundamental problem, don't you? How are you supposed to measure the rate of a chemical reaction? For example, if it just changes colour. Oops. You can't put a colour change on the top line. You still need the time on the bottom line, of course. Because you can't divide green by 50. So, um... What happens about that? Well, there's... Uh, I'll let you think about that for a second or so. Uh, we'll count five and see what could you replace the top line with there. If you can't have a number, or you can't have a colour there, what on earth could you put in the top line? Okay, spoiler alert. The answer is, you just scrub that and put a one on the top line. So you have one over a change in time. And that's what we use to measure the rate of a chemical reaction where there's a colour change. It's at this point, if we were in the lab, we would say, right guys, let's go into two different chemical uh, reactions that change colour. One is called the iodine clock reaction, 
where you mix two colourless solutions together and you wait, say, 10-15 seconds and then the colour suddenly goes fumph, black. It's wonderfully easy to see and measure. The other one involves potassium permanganate, um, where you start off with a nice deep purple colour. Uh, no jokes about the band, please, thank you. Um, and you uh, wait and the deep purple colour slowly fades away to colourless and then you stop the stopwatch. Both of these, um, you can calculate the rate of reaction and not worry about the top line because there isn't a change in volume or a change in mass and we just call it one. The only downside of this is you have to compare the rates, the number that you get here, you can only compare it to other examples of the same reaction that you've done that day at different temperatures perhaps or different concentrations. So as a result of this, because you're comparing one experiment to another experiment, these are called relative rates, where you do one over time. Um, units. Physics department very keen on units, quite rightly so. What on earth are the units of this going to be? Once again, I'll let you have a wee think about that for five seconds. Just stop doing that with Stupid, isn't it? Just gives you something to watch instead of thinking. Um, if we go back to old National 5 stuff, if I was collecting gas, say, and I got 20 centimetres cubed of gas in, say, five seconds, um, then, of course, we take uh, the change in volume, which is 20, over the change in time, which is five seconds. So that gives us four for the rate. And then we need the units. Now, because we measure the volume in centimetres cubed, we measure the time in seconds, then the, the, the units would have been centimetres cubed per second. Um, sometimes written centimetres cubed slash seconds. It's the same thing as the index of that, isn't it? We're taking it up to the top line and it becomes minus one. This is the proper SI version, but I think, if I remember correctly, chemistry still accepts that. I know physics don't. Um, so these would be the units when you had a top line. When you don't have a top line, the units are actually even easier. Um, let's say you managed to, let's say this particular reaction took 20 seconds. That's, don't pick the same number here, that's going to confuse people. Let's say um, my colour changing reaction took um, 100 seconds, for example, for easy counting. Um, 100 seconds to change colour, then that means that according to this calculation here, my rate is 1 over 100, which of course is 0 0.01, and the units this is still seconds, so that seconds was on the bottom line, that seconds, sorry, those seconds were on the bottom line, bring them up to the top line, and it becomes s to the minus one. Just that. I know, a bit weird looking. How do you pronounce that? Well, you just say it's per second. So 0 0.01 is the rate number, and seconds to the minus one are our units. So that is how you do the calculations for what's called relative rate when you don't have a top line, when there's no change in mass or volume, and it's just a colour change, uh, and it's called relative rate now, uh, and the units are whatever you measured that in to the minus one. Happy with that? That's the first concept. I might stop there and see if I can find a link to the iodine clock video and possibly potassium permanganate and oxalic acid reacting.